that some of these institutions are the best in the world, including the Chicago Center for Religion and Science and the Center for Theology and Natural Sciences in Berkeley, California. In other words, the University of California. Universities such as Cambridge in England and Princeton have also established professorships or lectureships on the reconciliation of the two camps. And I have the great privilege of having Canada's first tenure track position in science and religion at St. Joseph's College in the University of Alberta. Let's now look at some religious leaders. Pope John Paul II has written some fabulous pieces on science and religion, and I've cited some on the back page of your handout. In 1996, he said the following, New knowledge leads to the recognition of the theory of evolution as more than a hypothesis. In other words, evolution is real. Evolution is true. With regards to the Bible, he says, the Bible speaks of the origin of the universe, and here's your operative word, not to provide a scientific treatise. In other words, the Bible's not a book of science, but rather to state the correct, and there's another important word, the relationships of humanity with God and humanity with the rest of the universe. Sacred scripture simply declares that the world was created by God and it expresses this truth in the terms of the cosmology, or in other words, the science in use at the time of the writer. In other words, what God did is he came down to the level of the biblical writers, you know, thousands of years ago, and used their understanding of nature. Instead of revealing scientific facts like Big Bang cosmology or evolutionary biology, God comes down to the level of individuals and uses their categories or the ideas that they have in their minds in order to communicate as effectively as possible that he is the creator of the world and that he is their creator. Well, let's look at another Christian leader, this time an evangelical Protestant, Billy Graham, someone everyone loves. And with regards to origins, he makes it very clear what his views are. The Bible is not a book of science. Rather, the Bible is a book of redemption. In other words, it's a book to help us restore our relationship with God. Continuing, and of course I accept the creation story. I believe that God did create the universe. I believe God created humanity. Now this next quote is probably going to surprise a lot of you, especially since Billy Graham is an evangelical Protestant. And he says, whether it came by an evolutionary process and at a certain point he took this person or being and made him a living soul or not does not change the fact that God did create humanity. What is so wonderful about Dr. Graham is he'll be the first to tell you that he's not a scientist. He really doesn't have an opinion on evolution. But most importantly, whether the Lord created through evolution or not, according to Graham, and I think he's absolutely right here, doesn't change the fact that God is the creator, in particular, the creator of human beings. Whichever way God did it makes no difference as to what men and women are. And Billy Graham would say, we've all been created in the image of God, and their relationship to God. In other words, the Bible is a book of relationships between us and God. And of course, Billy Graham, over many, many years, has preached that we've broken our relationship 
with God through our sinfulness. However, the good news is it can be restored through Jesus. Well, with these examples from leaders in the scientific community and leaders in the religious community, what can we say? There are some reasonable middle ground positions. Within the scientific community, we're finding in America 40% of scientists believe in a personal God, that is a God who answers prayer. Within the scientific community itself, there's a science-religion dialogue that has been initiated. When it comes to our Christian leaders, Pope John Paul II accepts evolution, and interestingly, Billy Graham is open to evolution. So what can we say in the light of this evidence? Well, the dichotomy, the science-religion dichotomy, the origins dichotomy is problematic. And the belief that there's only two positions, the so-called scientific position and the so-called religious position, these can be challenged today. Well, we've identified the problem. It's the dichotomy, this notion that you're either religious or scientific, you're either a creationist or an evolutionist. And I think it's clear now that there are some middle ground positions. So let's get a little more specific now and move towards a solution. Notice I use the indefinite article, a solution, because I don't think for a second this is the solution. This is one way of doing it, and this is one way that I do it, and I've found my students find this very, very helpful. Words are very important, and two words that I believe we need to master in the origins debate are teleology and dysteleology. Teleology comes from the Greek term telos, which just means plan or purpose. So if you'll note in your handout, teleology is a belief that the world has an ultimate plan or purpose. Dysteleology, and think of the term dysfunctional, dysteleology is also a belief. It is the belief the world has no plan or purpose. In other words, that the world is run by blind chance and irrational necessity. Two other words that create a lot of confusion in the origins debate are evolution and creation. When it comes to evolution, let's let the professional biologist define it for us. According to biologists, evolution is simply this. It's a scientific theory that natural processes over billions of years produced all living organisms, including humans, period. That's it. It's a scientific theory. It deals with physical realities only. When it comes to creation, let's let the professional theologians define it for us. Theologians define creation very simply. It is a belief that the world is the product of creator. Period. That's it. Now, are theologians interested in how God created the world? They certainly are, but that's not their specialty, and this is why theologians need friends in the sciences. So, in this light, the doctrine of creation, then, is not about how God created. Rather, the doctrine of creation is that God created. In the light of these terms and definitions, we can point out a number of important relationships. Of course today, for many people, evolution is dysteleological. In fact, many people conflate these two terms together and blend them. But the thing to point out, the dysteleology is a belief. Now, if one wants to assume 